All right, so let's move on to our next lesson. Um, this is our last lesson that's going to be with our powers and roots discussion. And today what we're going to talk about is something called the real number system. Now, with this, we're talking about different types of numbers and how they are in identifying the types of numbers that we get. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a really big chart that you're going to copy down. So don't write too big when you're doing this. Um, and you'll also notice the different screen. I decided to have some fun and change the color of the screen a little bit. Uh, but here we go, and give me a second. We will get into this and start with our numbers. So when we first start thinking about numbers, we go all the way back to the time of caveman <laughs> and the numbers they used and the numbers that they actually worked with and they had were very limited. Matter of fact, they only had the numbers one through nine. And the only reason they had those numbers is because those were what we identify as natural numbers. So these are natural numbers and these are the numbers one, two, and so on, only through nine because they just didn't know how to do anything more than that. It wasn't until much, much later, like the ancient, um, there's a debate actually between is it the Babylonians or the Mayans that actually discovered this, but it wasn't until much later when the whole concept of, or the concept of, well, let's go back up for a second, you'll notice in the natural numbers, you can only go start at one, go up to nine, which means we were totally missing a lot of numbers, like 10. We didn't know how to do that. Imagine trying to count on your hands. You know, you have 10 fingers, but you didn't know how to count that high because there was no concept of zero. Well, it wasn't until, like I said, much later when the ancient Babylonians or Mayans came up with that concept of zero and added in that number zero, found the number zero. And when we add the number zero in... We call this new system the whole numbers. And the whole numbers is the number zero plus all the natural numbers. Now we get 10, 20 because we could put the one and the zero together. So that is the concept of the whole numbers. Now think about counting backwards. You know, you go 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And what's left? Well, you're getting to that point where there's nothing below zero. Well, we know there is, and we know that you can actually go lower than zero, and that got you into the negative numbers. So that's where we started going negative one, and negative two, and negative three, and so on and so on, and when you put those in, we called those the integers. So our new set of numbers, which is the negative numbers, plus all the whole numbers, well, we call that the integers. Now, one day, one of the kings in Europe walked up to one of his subjects and put an apple down in front of them and said, what do you have? And the person said, I have one apple. He said, great. And he took out a sword and with a quick blow, cut through the middle of the apple and ran away with part of the apple. And everyone looked at this commoner and said, what do you have now? And this person said, I don't know. I don't know a number for what I have now. I just have part. <laughs> well, they had to come up with a new type of number. And the number that they developed at this point were numbers like, um, let me get this out here, were numbers like, eh, like one half or... 0.3, or we could say 0.8 repeated. This was another type of number. Um, these numbers were known as the rational numbers. And rational numbers included all of the decimals, repeating decimals, and fractions Basically, any number that could be written as A over B. 
Now, can a natural number be written as a over b? Sure. 2 could be written as 2 over 1. Hence, we have the rational numbers. Now, occasionally, they would come up with a number that wasn't rational, that couldn't be written as a over b. For example, 0 0.1832 and so on and so on. Or everyone's favorite number, pi. Or the square root of 3. These numbers, they didn't fit into the rational numbers. You can't write them as a over b. So we called these numbers irrational. But they didn't fit as part of the rational numbers. They were in this group out here all by itself. And this was again known as the ir set of irrational numbers, numbers that cannot be expressed as a over b. Now, mathematicians are kind of funny. And we really don't like when we have two separate sets of numbers. So we would take and we would bring these two sets of numbers together into one giant set of numbers. And together, as we throw them all together, we would call these the real numbers. And so now we have the real number system. Now, I know you're sitting at home right now and you're laughing. And you're saying, ah, real numbers, that's really funny. So there must be fake ones too, right? <laughs> there are. That's right. Well, we don't call them fake numbers. We actually call them imaginary numbers. So out here, we have imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers are numbers like the square root of negative 1. Because we know from our last time that you can't have the square root of a negative number. And they don't fit into the real numbers. Now again, like I told you before, mathematicians don't like having, you know, these multiple, um, don't like having multiple, uh, I'm trying to get a new color there, don't like having multiple groups. So instead, what they did was they came together and they brought, and I'm going to run, I'm going to run out of space here. Uh, they brought all these numbers together, and they came up with what is called the complex number system. And so the complex number was all the real and all the imaginaries put together. Don't panic. We're not going to be dealing with complex numbers. We are going to stick with the real number system. Okay, phew, that was a long slide, wasn't it? But let's look at some numbers, and I want you to tell me what kind of number this is. For example, if I said 21 over 7, what kind of number is 21 over 7? Well, since 21 over 7 equals 3, it's a natural number. But if it's a natural number, it's also a whole number. And if it's a whole number, it's also an integer. And if it's an integer, it's also a rational. And if it's a rational number, <laughs> keep going, it's also a, that's right, it's also a real number. But what about negative 2.5? What kind of number is that? Well, it's not natural, it's not whole, it's not even an integer, because integers are only negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So all this really is, is this is a rational number. Okay, I'm going to give you two to try on your own. I'd like you to tell me the square root of 17, and do, uh, let's do negative 4. So would you tell me what kind of numbers those are? If you did it right, you would have told me that this was irrational and negative 4 was, that's right, it's a integer, it's rational, oh, you know what we forgot, and it's real. This one is also real, and this one is real. We forgot to put real number down.
Now, as part of your homework, it's going to ask you to compare two numbers. For example, I might ask you to compare 3 and 1 third to the square root of 15. Well, 3 and 1 third, I know where that is on the number line. Square root of 15, that's a little trickier. I know that it's going to be somewhere between 3 and 4 because I know it's between 9 and 16, and it's closer to 16. So it's going to be on the higher side of the 3s. So it's going to be maybe 3.8-ish, maybe? 3 and 1 third, well, 1 third is 0.3. So it looks like if I compare these, 3 and 1 third is less than the square root of 15. So when you compare them, you're kind of estimating how things go um, and where they belong when you are doing that. Finally, one of the last things I want to do is I want to look at the following. On your assignment, sometimes, and we learned a couple of days ago, that if I took the square root of a number, like the square root of 5 was, well, that's bad, the square root of uh, 9 was 3. Okay. But what if I said something like a squared equals, say, a squared equals 16? And I want to know, what is A? Well, like we do with all of our equations, we do the opposite of what the equation is saying. And so, since this is squaring A, I want to undo A squared. And to undo A squared, I would actually take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root of A squared, you get A. But here's the tricky part. When you take the square root of 16, you would think you get 4, right? But you don't. There's actually another answer, because not only is 4 squared 16, but so is negative 4. So actually, A has two different answers. It could be 4 or negative 4 in this case. In cube roots, it's only going to be the positive or negative, but for square roots, you actually will do both positive and negative. So that's tonight's lesson. Um, tomorrow when you come in, we will talk more about this, and we will do an assignment with it. See you then.